Hello, everybody. Welcome into the NBA front office show. Today, we're going to talk about Malik Monk potentially sticking in Sacramento. How could that happen? We'll get into that a little bit. The Wolves now undergoing mediation for their sale. The NBA's TV rights. We need to talk about uh, the draft tiebreakers that we had. And also, oh boy, I've got a lot to say about referees in the NBA and the replay system. It's broken. It's so broken. Uh, Keith, I'm going through it today. I can tell you that. I do not want to talk about basketball today. <laughs> and I woke up in an angry, frustrated, and annoyed mood after last night's game. A true tragedy took place last night. And uh, man, I'll tell you what. Sometimes fandom sucks. It just does. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I like to say fandom is... Uh... Moments of joy interspersed around a whole ton of annoyance and frustration and everything yes. else, right? In the NBA, one team ends their season happy and 29 don't. Then that's obviously an exaggeration. You know, I think Houston Rockets fans are like, we're okay. Like, we had a sure. nice year, better than expected. But yeah, that's, you know, where we're at. I, um, so full disclosure, and I've already said this on social media, I fell asleep at halftime of Lakers oh. Nuggets. I just, I was very tired and I pulled that whole, I'm going to close my eyes for a minute. And when I woke up, it was already into replays of, of, I, I don't know if it was a replay or another game or what it was. I was extremely confused. I didn't know what time You're it like, was. What is happening? Yeah. And then I was like, Oh, the game's over. I figured out the game was over and I'm like, I'm not going to look uh, at who won. Cause I knew I wanted to wake up this morning and watch. So I woke up this morning, watched the second half and, I, I promise I'm not playing to, to you here, to anybody else. But my first thought was, oh, man, Trevor had a hell of a night. <laughs> like, oh, I was like, was, this is just, I'm sure, was like, it was awful. just all kinds of anger and frustration and everything spilling out. Because I get the referee part of it, but there's about 15 other things Lakers fans could be mad about, too, um, from that game. And I, I've seen it all today. Yeah, you know, I've seen you know all sure. kinds of you know stuff that people are mad about. Sixers fans are going through it this morning too, yes. and you know so it's yeah, it was uh it's it's unfortunate, but it's yeah, that's the story of the day. I guess today is is the the, the endings of those two games. Yeah, so let's just let's just get into it. Let's let's rip the band-aid off here because or we you're could right. just I was... do a deep dive on Cavs magic and just well, we could do that. That game <laughs> that game actually happened. Most people wouldn't will not would not think so, but there was yeah. another game last night that happened. It was. it was hidden on NBA TV, but it did happen. Um, but no, you're you're absolutely right. I was going through it. I was I think I was up to like four a.m. I went and lifted weights because I was just pissed off and I was like, I need to do something because I couldn't sleep. Need to go do something physical, need to throw some things around and stuff. Um, it was one of those nights, you know what I mean? Like, just not a good night. But I'll tell you what, though, all of let that, me tell you something real quick. Yeah, when the Patriots lost the second Giants Super Bowl, yeah, so the first one, the undefeated season, I was at the Super Bowl. My wife and I had bought tickets and drove. We were living in Southern California at the time. We drove to Arizona. We were at the game. That was just, you know, that went from being, I'm not kidding, maybe the best day of my life outside of marriage and the birth of my child. And sure. if they're not watching, probably the best day of my life, period. Um, to, like, awful. We got in the car. My dad was like, I have that hotel booked for you near the border. I'm like, we're driving straight home. I got to get out of Arizona. I never want to come here again. <laughs> um, like I was so mad, but the second one, when they lost, I was so frustrated. I left the house and I was like, I'm going on a walk. I put headphones in and I literally ended up having to call for a ride home. Cause I walked eight miles from the house, like in like almost a straight line. Good and Lord. I was like, I'm not walking eight miles back. Like that's how <laughs> angry I was. Like I, like I walked for literally hours and now it's like, I don't know. It's probably 12 30, one in the morning. And I'm like, I need you to come get me. Like, I can't, I'm not going to walk all the way home. So, yeah. So I get the need to do something. Like, I fully understand that. Dude, that's like that uh, X Men Origins Wolverine movie, <laughs> which, which, by the way, we need to talk about the Wolverine and Deadpool trailer. Maybe we'll do yes. some, uh, some, uh, whatever we want to call it, scheduled well, nonsense now scheduled. At, at the end. Yeah. We'll do that at the end of the show. But, 
um, at, at the end of that X-Men Origins Wolverine that everybody hates that movie. It's bad. I don't hate it quite as much as everyone else, but yeah. it's bad. But at the end, when she when she's got she's got the power of influence and she tells the guy just to keep walking till his feet bleed and then keep walking more or whatever, which was kind of lame. But but that was you. That was yeah, you after that much. game. You just yeah. kept going. I was so angry. That's crazy. Yeah, I was That's so crazy. so mad. Sometimes you get that you get so fr- like you have to do something physical. Like you, yeah. you have to do yeah. do something just to get that out. And you want to wear um, yourself out, so it's like now I can just go to bed. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm over it, but yeah. Oh, exactly. I said my my <laughs> wife. She goes, "Why did you go to bed so late last night?" I said, "Oh no, no, you don't understand what happened." She goes, "What?" I said, "Well, I I said what happened? They lost a, at the buzzer and I think she's looking at me like, and like why would that keep you up so late? I'm like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> but yeah. but Keith, all of that, all of that emotion, everything that's in it that's involved in this. There's a lot of Lakers fans right now that are upset for a lot of reasons. And I think you're absolutely right. Uh, most of it is the Lakers screwed up. They made way too many mistakes. This It's not on the referees. Yeah. However, I think I, you have to separate these two things. I think two things are, are true. The referees did not, I think ultimately cost the Lakers the game. I think were there some mistakes made? Absolutely. It was a disaster of a, of an officiated game. Um, especially the replay system. I need to talk about that in a minute. But most of it falls in the lap of the Lakers. It's got to fall in there. The, the disaster that took place, it's their fault. It's their fault. It's Darvin Ham. It's the it's the team, the players on the floor, all of that. It goes on them. That needs to be separate from a conversation we have to have about the replay system. Because I don't want this conversation about the replay system, which has to be, which is something that goes beyond this one game, that goes beyond this one team, that goes beyond the Lakers. This is a league-wide problem that the NBA has to deal with here that needs to be fixed this offseason. Um, I don't want that to get dismissed as sour grapes, right, or, or something like that. I, this did not cause the Lakers. Let me preface again. This did not cause the This is not what made the Lakers lose the game. I'm not saying that at all. But this is a big problem for the league in and of itself. So in last night's game, we saw D'Angelo Russell get hit in the face on a, on a drive to the basket. The officials called a foul on the floor. It got challenged. We, as we were doing the play by play, we went, Oh, that was a dumb challenge by Denver. Like, okay, that's easily going to get, you know, the, the challenge is going to be unsuccessful and they're going to lose their challenge. And that's, that's going to be that. Like it was blatant, plain as day. Everybody could see it happen. LeBron dropped F-bombs after the game because he couldn't believe it either. They overturned it. And I think that's a problem for the league when everybody at home can see what happened. We're looking at it from all these different angles, and it's so blatantly obvious. And this is not the first time this has happened this season. This has been fairly commonplace. I've been saying don't leave it in the hands of the officials because you never know what the hell they're going to say when you go to a review. So now you've got an NBA that needs to be very transparent with things that already had the issue with a player betting on his own games and all of that with the whole Jante Porter situation and needs everything to look on the up and to be on the up and up. And now you've got officials overturning something that was blatant, clear. Everybody saw it and everybody saw that a mistake was being made. I think there's some reasons for that, but I want to let you talk a little bit here, Keith, because I've ranted enough. Something needs to be done about the replay system, and the answer may simply be, or the review system, the answer may simply be scrap it, but what happened last night and has happened other times throughout the season, that can't happen if you're going to have review. Yeah, the Celtics were on the same short end of the stick earlier in the year. Obviously, regular season game didn't matter nearly as much, but very famously, Jalen Brown took a shot uh they it was against the pacers i can't remember who the uh player was um but the player hit him in the head yeah. and then they called it a clean block and said the contact was incidental like i don't like you hit him in the head like it's not there's no incidental con it could be incidental contact to the body to the arm mm-hmm. like there's a lot of ways but the head like that's not if we're shooting a shot and you get hit in the head it's going to impact you my my overall takeaways match yours to start with that the people who are 
sitting here hours later, you know, 12 plus hours later and saying the Lakers were robbed and lost because of the refs. They've lost the plot. That's blind yeah. homerism. You blew a 20 point second half lead. Yeah. That's on. We get, we fully understand that 20 point leads are not what they used to be in the NBA. And I think there's a component of this of you have to beat the nuggets, meaning Lakers, anybody, you cannot give them life. If you give them any form of life, they are going to come back and beat you. They did it mm-hmm. to the Celtics twice in the regular season. For sure. Who knows if they do it to them in the NBA Finals, if if we should get there. But that's it with the Nuggets. You, when you have them down, you have to beat them. You have to keep mm-hmm. your foot on the gas. You cannot let up even slightly. Um, I'll say another component is, did Anthony Davis just take the rest of the night off in the fourth quarter? Like, what happened? Like, he one shot? Like the, that's a, that's a team wide failure yeah. and a failure on his part. You can't, he's too good to get one shot in an entire quarter of basketball, sure. especially as things are falling apart, but they went away. They did what they've done. They went away from what was working for yeah, no reason. Made no sense at all. Uh, LeBron made the decision he made at the end. I'm not going to criticize him for it. He made the right play. He just missed. Like, it's yeah. like he was it, wide open. Le- I get it. Yeah, we've gotten to the point with LeBron where it's it, he shoots. He should have passed. He passed. He should have shot. Like yeah. people are just never going to let that stuff go. And ninety nine percent of the time, I think he's made the absolute right play. So whatever with that. But to your point on the replay stuff, I'm where you went last. Just get rid of it. Yeah. I, if we're gonna have human error, fine. I don't care. I don't like the human error on the we're going to double down on the error because of some technicality or some silly thing as far as I don't like that you challenged this judgment call. You're challenging that I was wrong. We see that all the time on block charge stuff, especially. Yeah, Um, it is. That is a true judgment back with whatever you want on that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in that that's where they're like, it's very clear. There are officials who they're not going to give because they're not going to back themselves up the out of bounds stuff. I get it. Those, I mean, these guys move so fast. They're so big. There's so many bodies in the way. Sometimes you miss stuff, but I'm fine. If it's a missed call and we move on because I'd rather that than the five minutes slowing it down to you know, a fraction of a second zooming all the way in to see whose fingernail touched it last. Sure. I don't like just play. Like it's, it's this stuff ends up for me overall wrecking the game far more than any bad call was made. Got to get it right. Because to your point, if you're going to review it and then you're still going to come back with a call that 99% of people are like, that's still wrong. Yeah, that's way worse than not reviewing it way at all. Now, I will also say there were a couple other plays to just to take it back to, like what? And I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, but like, Darvin Ham, what are you doing, my man? Like, are you are you gonna challenge? Like, what? Like, oh, you can't take him with you. Yeah, you know, it's it's a, that's the old joke about like coaches always save a timeout because when they're on their deathbed, they're like, I got a timeout left. <laughs> like it, like what are you doing, man? You can't. Those challenges don't roll over to game three. Like, it, there's a point where sometimes you have to challenge almost just to have your guys back. You know, just <laughs> I, to prove it. So I put out on on X this morning when I woke up. I said, "Yep, woke up annoyed." Somebody responded, "Darvin Ham woke up with two with two timeouts and a challenge." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like what are you doing? That like that's so funny. true. Like, yeah, I just so like that part of it. I also am like, I don't understand what's happening there, yeah. and I don't want to make. The, I I know you spend a lot of time talking about him and sure. stuff like that, so I don't want to go down that whole path. I I will say this: if they get swept again, he's he's gone. Like he's not going to survive yeah. it. There's just no chance. Like it's e- even if it is a sweep and it's two more two point losses. No one's going to stand up there and be like, well, we were close two years in a row. Like, and no one wants to hear it because no one cares. It doesn't matter. You, you get swept twice in a row in the playoffs and, and twice in a row where you had to fight your way into the party mm-hmm. to begin with. So see you later. We're moving on with a new coach, but I, yeah, I, I'm, I share in the frustration for Lakers and Sixers fans this morning from the, 
I just don't want officiating being that big of a topic. Yeah. Where I, where I then I, I, I get off the train and say, continue on wherever you're going is with those who are like the teams were robbed in these series should both be one, one. That's yeah. where it, that, that's where it's all right. You can go on to the next couple stops down the line. I'm getting off here like that, that part for me, I, I just did. That's where that's all going too far. Yeah, I, I talked about it on the postgame show a ton. I won't rehash it a bunch, but they scored 40 points and a half. They went yeah. away. They spent like five minutes where they didn't score at all. But, and not because they just misshot. They completely went away from the offense that they were running. Yep. Initially, the, the Nuggets made an adjustment, and the Lakers failed to adjust to that adjustment. Some of that's on the coaching. But, uh, I, Keith, I, I think that part of the issue, and this is, I don't know if this is what happened or not on the play. Let me preface this. I don't know if this is what happened on the, the review, but... Part of the problem that the NBA has, if this is the case, people said, well, this was the commentary going around, was that what happened was the the official, I believe it was Scott Foster, whistled a foul, and then D'Angelo Russell gets hit in the face, and where he thought there was a foul, there wasn't one, so what he was reviewing was where he thought he saw there wasn't a foul where he thought there was, and then he got hit in the face after, but that wasn't what he was reviewing. So he wasn't allowed to make that call or something. Again, I don't know if that's accurate, but think about that for, for a minute. I don't know if that's even possible or not. Like that's how crazy these rules are with these things. We've seen it where you can go back two, three, four possessions and see whether someone's foot's on the line for a three or not. If somebody's heel touches out of bounds, but on a replay of that specific play, if you see something else that happens in that play that obviously was a mistake that was made, you can't address that. Like there's, there's some things in here that again, create and macro level beyond just this one game, a perception problem for the NBA where the average viewer is watching at home. They see something that even just the, the most casual of fan can say, that's clearly a rule violation. Something happened here and the officials come back with the opposite decision, it makes it, as you said, look even worse because you're doing that with the power of review. Without the power of review, you can at least lean on, these guys are so fast, It's everything's happening, it's, it's human error, it's so hard to make these decisions, all of that stuff. When you have review and still get it wrong, that's when people start to ask questions. What's going on? Why are these mistakes being made? Is there something else at play? And that puts you into an uncomfortable area. Not in any way am I suggesting that there was a reason why the refs would have helped the Nuggets win or anything. No, if anything, it, should, it would have been the opposite to extend sure. the series and make more money and everything. That is not what I'm saying. But I'm saying for an NBA where they want to have everything be transparent, having people at home watching the game and see something blatantly wrong take place and see the officials come back otherwise, that's not a com comfortable conversation for the league to be having, which again leads us back to you shouldn't have review at all or you need to drastically tweak the rules of the replay system so that you don't have this happen. Because when you're able to, you should get 99 out of 100 calls correct when you can look at all these angles, slow it down, all that stuff. And if you can't do that, if you can't meet that standard, then scrap it. Then then don't have it because it's just going to create more problems than it's worth. Yeah, and I, to be very fair to NBA officials, they get a bad rap. They for are sure. way better than people give them yes. credit for. In, in all actually, sports. Yeah. Yeah. All sports, but I'll keep it to the NBA because, you know, I don't, I know you didn't see it. I'm sure in the Yankees game yesterday afternoon, Aaron Boone, the Yankees manager got thrown out five pitches into the game. He was barking at the umpire and the umpire told him enough. And Aaron Boone went, gave him a thumbs up and nodded. Didn't say anything. A fan in the first row behind the Yankees dugout yelled something at the umpire and he turned around and threw Aaron Boone out. That is the, like the, yeah, the, the umpire thought he, that thought, Aaron Boone, thought said, Aaron it, Boone or, said it and threw him out oh of the game. Gosh. And Aaron Boone was like, I didn't say anything. And then like they all were like, it was that guy in the stands, which right, the guy in the stands it, within right. reason, say whatever he wants. Sure. You know, keep, I mean, yeah, if you get within really reason. vulgar or you know, yeah. threatening, like, yeah, get him out of but this. Hey, hey, ump, you, you suck. Know. Yeah, and then, you suck, yeah. ump, or right. like, get glasses or whatever. But yeah, so um, so that's just an example of 
poor officiating and bad, you know, way to handle something in another sport in the same exact day. But in general, if we keep it to the NBA, I can't tell you how many times I will watch a game and be like, oh, that was a bad call. Then I see a replay. And I'm like, oh, it was wrong. Like I was wrong. Yeah. Like I, you know, one, you, you can't see it on TV. I don't have the angle. Like happens all the time, right? There's like, there wasn't enough contact there for a foul. And then you're like, oh man, like he totally wiped him out. Like on his hip below, mm-hmm. you know, where the TV angle was cut at or whatever it may be. But what my big problem with the review system is it's almost come down to one of these things where it's like, all right, we're going to, um, we're going to go, we're, we're going to do a full review of this branch of the government. Okay. Who's going to do it? Oh, that branch is going to review themselves. <laughs> right. Okay. Thanks. Like that's <laughs> like, that's part of what happens here. It's like, mm-hmm. all right. And like, the other thing is too, people want these like public, like, things and you don't really want the referees to do look at what happened last year after the ridiculousness in Boston where they issued that we're going to have sleepless nights and all that public apology after you know LeBron was called for the foul that wasn't a foul or LeBron got fouled rather yeah and then Patrick Beverly grabbed the camera which still was very funny that was an epic moment deservedly so got a technical foul for what he did but then with the Nobody really wanted that re- response from the officials of like how bad they felt and they're going to have sleepless nights over that because all it's now done is turned into a joke because anything else you say, people are going to be like, okay, like, no, what, it, it wasn't like they went back and said, you know what, change the result, no foul, game over, Lakers win. Like, it's, it's so it's the only two results that are going to make even a portion of the fan base happy is we overturn it after the fact and then either replay or say game over in my team's favor yeah. or literally the next game, like in LA, they drag the officiating crew to center court and execute them. Then people will be like, okay, they got what they deserve. <laughs> like it's like that's, but that's the problem, right? So that's why like, I'm going to highly encourage everybody who, if this is out in time or after the fact, I'm going to hope you didn't, don't read the last two minute report. It makes no one feel better. Oh like, no. no. I, I can't tell you any time I've ever read the last two minute report from a situation where I felt like the Celtics got a raw deal. And then I'm like, oh, they admitted it. Boy, I feel awesome. Let's go get ice cream. Like at I least they like, admitted it. Right. Yeah. I, I just right. like I don't even care at that point. It's like nothing changed. Like, okay, you know you were wrong. Guess what? I knew you were wrong last night when it happened. You're just admitting you were wrong. 16 hours later, congratulations. Good on you. Like, I don't like, like, I just, this, a lot of the way we handle this stuff, they're meant to try to clean things up, be more above board and all the things that happen. And in reality, they're not doing the things we want them to do. And that's my problem with some of this stuff is like, I'd rather, let's just go back to the way it was speed things up, just play. And then, we we're still going to argue and yell about it the next day, but at least in the moment we just moved along. Like we're not, you know, it's these reviews that end up taking minutes long. That's my number one thing with the review system. You get like two looks at each angle. If that's not enough to figure it out, it's over and mm-hmm. call stands and we move on. Like there's, well, there's no, like we have no reason to continue to sit there and look and look and look and look. And then they put the headphones on and the two look at it. And then the one walks away. Then he calls them back over and it's like, Hey, let's actually take another look at it. Like, like, I, like why? Like just, you know, if you can't, if it, if you can't figure it out, then we stand with the call on the floor and we go and it's done and we just move. I'm also with you of change you need to be able to review the totality of a play. So yeah. in your example from last night, if you're saying what I called was a foul was not a foul, but subsequently to that, he you know pulled out an ax and hatcheted it off his head. Right. Like, all right, well, that actually is a foul. Like that shouldn't be allowed. And yeah, you know, we're going to shoot two free throws with anybody on the floor because the other guy's now dead. So it's like, I just like, I, I can't like, <laughs> I don't understand the concept of review. I'm reviewing the one piece and then 
15 things happen after it. And I'm like, well, but I can't, I can't look at those to get my blinders on here real quick and hide. Cause I can only focus on this one part. Like, what are we doing? Like the whole thing has gotten so stupid and it's either review it in totality or don't review any of it and just move, move keep yeah. the game moving. Yeah, um, we saw that earlier in the year where uh, there was a play in, in Lakers Warriors where they review they were reviewing whether or not Draymond Green's foot stepped out of bounds or not. He clearly traveled before it, like everybody could see it. He shuffled his feet; it was obvious. But oh, but we can't look at that. We're only looking at <laughs> yeah. whether or not his foot stepped. It's like, come on! And, and I, I'm glad you make me laugh with the hatchet thing. Um, I I went there too. Only I went to last night. We were talking about it. I went to. Okay, so if it's the whole concept is, well, he released the ball already. Okay, so then anytime somebody releases the ball, they're fair game afterwards. Yeah. So just come flying in like your Goldberg from back in the day or Edge or whatever wrestler you want and just spear somebody, right? Just yeah. just F and tackle them. Yeah. And and that's that's okay. He already released the ball, so it, it's all right. Like, we know that's not a thing. So It's the same thing with the landing space stuff yes. on three-pointers. We have landing space things on three pointers, but we don't review it. Guy goes up for a dunk or a layup, and a guy slides in underneath him after he's already in the air. Like that's just that's you know block charge, simple stuff. No, that yeah. should that's that's as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than sliding a foot under a shooter. Yeah. Like let's let's either like call it all or let's just get back to playing. You know, yeah. and that's where you know I struggle with. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. No, we didn't talk about this yesterday. I don't think. And just so everybody knows who watches this, most people probably assume at this point, follow on social media, the whole controversy about whether or not Eric Spolstra ordered his team to try to go hurt somebody at the end of the game that was brought up by other people in the media is mm -hmm. the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Like it was the done, like it just, Eric Spolstra was not going to do that. I'm no. sure he might have said, let's go finish the game hard. Let's try to, you know, really show like, hey, we're we're still going after it. That's who we are. We're the Miami Heat, Heat right. culture, blah, blah, blah. I don't think he said, go take Jason Tatum out. Like, it just, nothing in his entire profile as a coach would tell me he did that. Caleb Martin's not that kind of player. I just, I meant, I wanted to talk about it yesterday. I don't yeah. think we did, so I wanted to put it out there today. Like, that's just, it, it, like, just move on. Jason Tatum popped off the floor and said, let's go shoot the free throws. And like, that's all we needed to know. Like, let's say that you buy that, that you do buy that. Think about what you're having to assume that Eric Sprolster was willing to risk. You think about what level of coach he is in the NBA. You think about how much he makes. Think about yep. where he is in the Team USA system. You think about how much respect he has around the league from players as well. Could something get to him in the heat of the moment? Sure, it's, it's possible, I guess. But the likelihood of him doing something like that knowing everything he has to do. Because, let Keith, what if, what happens if a camera's nearby, a mic is nearby, and they catch Eric Sprolstra saying, hey, Jason Tatum's over there, sweep the leg, right? Or so, yeah. something, to that, something to that effect. What happens to Eric Sprolstra then? He's going to get, at a minimum, fined and suspended. Yeah. And probably, very likely, a lot of people are going to be, he needs to be fired and sent out of the game. Or a very long suspension. I mean, it's like what happened in the NFL, right? With the whole bounty stuff. Sure. Uh, like those guys all got suspended, I believe it was for a full year. So it's like, yeah, if you start having that stuff like that's and there's a, and people like coaches all the time will tell a guy, Hey, go in there and bang some bodies, knock somebody down. That's different. That is yeah. very different than go injure someone yes. like that. Is, th those are, again, if you can't, if you can't tell the difference. Those are miles away. Like, Nothing Caleb Martin did was wrong intentionally. I think it was a little reckless. I get it. Drew Holiday tagged him as he went through the lane. That caused it. But yeah, it's just that stuff where I like that that part. Like I just wanted to make sure because somebody did say like, "Hey, are you gonna talk about this at all on the show?" And there it is. We've talked about. It. I've said my piece on it. And I just Jason Tatum got was the one who got knocked to the floor with his legs knocked out from underneath him. Could have been really bad. He popped right up and said, let's go shoot the free throwers, move on. Mm -hmm. And no one else from the Celtics even had a problem with it. So, like, anybody else, like, just just let it go. Like, let's let's go. Yeah, but, yeah, man, I it kills me that we had these two great games 
in today instead of being as they they deserve the nuggets being talked about of like you you have to beat them like you they're the chance perfect. for a reason you have to play 48 minutes yeah. like jokic is he's ridiculous he is just the, there's i this isn't even a lakers specific thing i don't know what any team can throw at him that he is not going to problem solve it, it yeah. may come down to let's hope guys miss shots because yeah. he's going to figure it out um they i think the lakers have done a pretty good job honestly they held on what 101 points last mm-hmm. night they were yeah. right there like they it's did everything not, they needed to do yeah you, you were right there and you could still solve it now i think the the bigger problem if we just keep it to the basketball they let jamal murray get going and once he saw those first couple go down that was it's like he's a scorer like yeah. that's just how it goes once a scorer sees the first couple fall like it's it's now now it's on i would not be surprised if jamal murray has a monster game three because that's the kind of scorer he is. Now he's like, I, I, I can, I can get it going now, and let, let's go. So, but yeah, man, it's it's just tough, and it, and it's we talked about it in the season or series preview. The Lakers have no margin for error. It is not a no. small mark. It is a zero margin for error. They have to play nearly perfect basketball to to beat this team, and just you know they they they've been close, but just not close enough. Yeah, and that's uh, and they got what they needed from D'Angelo Russell last night. Uh, he was great. They they got you know solid performance. AD was fantastic. LeBron was doing his thing, but the mistakes, the turnovers, the it, it, the offensive rebounds he gave up, all those things, you just can't have them. Like it's uh, you know, Rui Hachimura missed a couple layups and missed a dunk. Um, Austin Reeves didn't shoot particularly well. You have to ha- you have to check every box in order to beat yep. Denver because if you give if you open the door at all, Denver will walk through it every single time. They will yep. walk right through. They'll say thank you, um, and they execute. I've talked about it all year. They execute down the stretch like like nobody else. They yeah. are it, phenomenal. Just yeah. I mean, possession after I'm looking at the at the play by play right now. I mean, I think they came up empty in the final seven minutes. I think they came up empty on a trip once. Like that's that's pretty insane, right? Yeah. And that was just an offensive foul turnover, like. They either got the offensive rebound or scored every possession for the final, you know, six or seven minutes of the game, which is, uh, and again, that's a quick cursory glance. Maybe there's one in there where they missed a shot or something, but that's uh, that's part of what makes them so incredible. They're they are fantastic. Yeah, I mean, Jokic went for fifteen, eight, and eight in the second half. Yeah, like is that? I mean, good good luck. Like there, there's just not much you can do. Uh, with, with that, yeah, I, I I pulled I pulled up the same thing on the play by play. I think it was two trips that they yeah. went empty. Uh, one was a Cobo Pope missed a three, Murray missed a three, and then other than that, they either scored or re- oh, I'm sorry, Murray had a turnover too. So three yeah. empty trips in seven minutes. That's crazy. Yeah, crazy. yeah. I mean, that's and there's nothing you can do. Like like that's the. That's the killer part. I mean, there's just it, it wasn't even like the Lakers were playing badly. No. It's just you have to play perfect to beat this team, which is weird because it's not like no one is going even if this Nuggets team wins, we're not going to be having a conversation in August when we're like we got to fill a show. Like, all right, let's talk about all-time great teams. We're not going to talk about this Nuggets team like that, but that's how they feel in the yeah. playoffs. Like they feel like an all-time great team. So uh, All right, let's move they, on. We've spent yeah, more we've spent half an hour on yeah. <laughs> just this, but but well, we meandered. We did what we did. We, we did. Hit a few we did. Like we hey, just on. Did. I'm sorry. One last thing. Nick Sixers. Oh yeah. Like get an eight. You 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 allowed eight points in the last 27 seconds. And they're like, and they're protesting the game. Yeah, well, they're they're filing a grievance about yes. the officiating in the first two games. They're not protesting the result. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, the correct. So, yeah. They they're gonna do. They're gonna do what literally every team has done in the playoffs at some point, which is they're going to send a tape to the, to the NBA saying, Hey, we think our guys were getting fouled here. Like this was a Phil Jackson special back when he was the bulls coach Mm -hmm. and then continued it his entire career. And what, what the difference was the early years, the NBA sent back. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. We see the Pistons are literally trying to break Michael Jordan in half, but yeah, he's, He's still playing, so we'll we'll let you know. And then eventually, at some point, it flipped. And then, if we know how it works, you do it. 
next game out, generally you tend to get a whole bunch of calls that go your 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 favor, and then you go. But the big thing is you can only pull that card once or play that card once yeah. per playoff. So they're going to play it now, and I guess, yeah, you're down 2-0. You might as well. But, yeah, I mean, you allowed eight points in the last 27 seconds of the game. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I – yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Referees aside, like look in the mirror. Like I, you know, it is what it it's is. Crazy. But yeah. Okay. Let's get on <laughs> to the to some of the other things that we have to get into today. Um let's go here. Malik Monk said he wants to stay in Sacramento. Now there's a ring of familiarity here for this because he also said he wanted to stay in LA. But ultimately, the the money in Sacramento. He he said a bunch of times, "I want to stay with the Lakers." He's happy there, all that. But then once contracts started getting passed out, and he got like double the money from Sacramento, he he left, and of course he did. It, it, absolutely, he should with, yeah. with that situation. I wonder if we're going to be in a similar scenario here, where he's saying, "I want to stay in Sacramento," and then somebody comes along and offers him more than what the Kings are are able to do. Yeah, and that's that's at the root of this. And he did say when he was asked, and this is coming out of their Kings had their like final like media, like it's the postseason wrap up where like everybody does their exit interview and then they talk to the media and they asked him like, Hey, if all things are equal, do you want to stay? And he's like, definitely. But that's the key part of that is if all things were equal and all things may not be equal. So Sacramento, here's what they're facing. They have only his early bird rights. They are very, very likely going to be an over the cap team. So that means they're going to have to use those early bird rights to resign Malik Monk to anything approaching a value that he should get. Mm -hmm. So what that means is they are limited to 175% um, over what he makes right now. So what that essentially works out to is a four year, about $78 million contract for Malik Monk. That's right under where he probably would normally be valued at this point. Yeah. And I know some people are going to wait, you're saying Malik Monk is a $20 million a year guy. Yeah. Like for what he does you look now, what he's done. like and where the cap is going and where teams are going to be. Yeah. Malik Monk's probably a 20 million a year guy. Now there's a world where the Kings could say, hold on, let's do a one plus one for the most we can give you with your early bird rights knowing you'll opt out after it, then we have full bird and we take care of you, a.k.a. the Bobby Portis in Milwaukee, yeah. where they had, and they were in an even rougher spot because he made, he was coming off the biannual exception at that point. So that's where, where it runs down to. The difference between with the Lakers, it was a one-year deal for the minimum, and the Lakers yeah. were like, we we really can't offer you anything. Like, yeah, they was, had a taxpayer you know, MLE was the best yeah, they could, and it was like, they could yeah, do. That's not nearly enough. He ended up getting most of the non-taxpayer MLE and in when, and as you said, yeah, he should have, right? This was a chance for him to, you know, make real money. But this is it. Where this could get sideways for the Kings is if one of these cap space teams parachutes in and says, hey, we'll go 25 million a year. Yes. Or we'll, we'll start you at 25 million or whatever it is. Malik Monk may be like, thanks, Sacramento. Appreciate all you did. Taking the money. See you later. And that's that's going to be what, what we're watching for with him when he hits free agency with this. I, I I I don't know that he does the full four-year deal with the Kings. I think if he resigns there, it's probably that one plus one mm -hmm. situation where then he's set up for, all right, at least I have two years of money locked in if everything goes sideways. But at the minimum, like I can get out of this contract after one more year then it's a level playing field. And actually, in a lot of ways, it, it's a king's advantage field because they, they would have the, the ability to offer him more. So that, that's what we're going to be watching for on June 30th. I guess. It still feels weird to say June 30th. Like it still yeah. feels like we should say July 1st. July 1st. Yeah, it's June 30th at 6 p.m. So. Keith, I have a, I, I'll tell you what. I, I have a hard time watching the Orlando Magic and not thinking, God, Malik Monk would be perfect. Right. Here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like he's exactly yeah. what they need. Yep. Yeah. And it's, I, I think it is, he is now shown he has the skill to be very, very, very good off the bench, which that is a real skill. And guys will get paid to be very good players off the bench. But he is, yeah, he can shoot, he can score. He's a, he's a way better playmaker 
than people give him credit for. That started a little bit with the Lakers when they kind of gave him the reins on the second unit and said, yep. you go, this is you, you're running the show here. And I think they were good about saying you're running the show, but that doesn't mean it's the Malik Monk show. Take every shot. It's you need to set guys up and do those things. But then the Kings have really handed him the reins and said, this is it. When, when you're in the game and not on the floor, De'Aaron Fox, it's your team to run. Like you set guys up. He's, a, he's really become a very, very good playmaker beyond just a good shooter score, which is that's part of why we're having this conversation of he might have priced himself out of what the Kings can do to resign him. Yeah, he very well may have. But we'll see again. We have to reframe things because with the cap rising, some of the salaries that they'll be sticker shock for, we have to remember the cap's going up. So you've got to adjust. And that's why, again, yep. if you go over to spot track and you see percentage of the cap, that's probably the better way to really look at, at some of these contracts because it, it lets you compare apples to apples rather than just get focused on, on what, 20 million? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. well, you have to remember, like, that it changes. The reality of it changes uh, as the cap goes up. So and to be completely honest, we do that, too. Like, we, oh, still- we do. Like, sure. Oh, and then it's like, actually, there you go. Right, Wait. Oh, yeah, I kind of get it. Sure. All right. But yeah, but that's our initial response. That's why, you know, I, 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 I try not to, when it's a contract terms thing, I try not to immediately fire off a tweet of like, oh my God, like what a crazy amount of money. Like it's, you know, at some point this is all monopoly money now anyway, and none of it feels real and kind of is what it is. But yeah, it's just, you know, it's yeah. Like you said, that's why we put that percentage of the cap on all of it uh, over on spot track. So check that out. All right. The uh, media rights negotiated. Speaking of the salary cap and something that's that, you know <laughs> going to be tied into all this. A little important. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Uh, so the, the NBA's media rights are now going to be open up beyond just TNT ESPN. Uh, they're going to be open up to some digital platforms. It could be Amazon, could be Apple, could be Netflix that could get into the mix here. Uh, now that, that this is, has opened up and they're not just exclusively negotiating with their, with the incumbents, this could create a situation where in the near future, we're watching NBA basketball on a streaming platform. And I know you can watch some games like on, on HBO max right now and and things like that. But in terms of they could designate like the NFL that did with, uh, with Amazon prime, you could designate a specific night, specific game. These are the games that you can watch exclusively on this streaming platform. So whether that's good or bad for the consumer, that's probably a different conversation. But this is potentially another way for the NBA to bring in revenue and, and sell their their media rights. And maybe it's something that we see through the in-season tournament or something like that. It'll be interesting to see how all the pieces come to play here. But the bottom line, um, the NBA, we could be seeing them across even more platforms in the future. Yeah, absolutely. There was an excellent article, which is where we're like we're we're getting this news of all this from Andrew Marchan over on the Athletic. Um, if you have the have a subscription, I recommend find it and read it. One of the things he talks about in there, and there's a lot of stuff packed in there, is uh Monday night, so just yesterday, really at like midnight, uh, the exclusive window ended with Disney ESPN and Turner TNT. So now that means the NBA is open for negotiation with anybody. That doesn't mean they're leaving the current partners. That's not even close to what that means. It just means other people can talk to them. The league has long said they wanted a minimum of a third, if not a fourth partner to come in. And they've talked about building a package of games for very likely a streaming service. Also notated in there, NBC wants back in the mix. Apparently they really want back into try to you know get involved on um you know NBA stuff again which makes sense the uh one of the people who's in charge over there was in charge of Turner uh for the last several years and now he's over at NBC they've been great partners or he has been great partners with the NBA in the past other things that were mentioned in here were um potentially playoff games conference finals or NBA finals could be uh put on to a streaming service I, we'll see um with that I think this one is actually a potential good change. Fans could buy a um, an individual game package, either for a team or just like into like actual games. So if it's like 
man, I, I, I don't have time to watch all of the Lakers games, but I want to watch when the Lakers play the Celtics. Sure. And that's a really bad example because that's going to be on national TV somewhere. But like, it, it's not for whatever reason. I want to see that. There's a talk of letting you buy the one game or letting you buy a package that is, I'm just buying the Lakers games. And what they would do is, it would be a, you would be signing up with the NBA. In the NBA, some of that money would be routed to that team's localized broadcast. So whoever their local broadcast, I think that's Spectrum in in LA, right? For the Lakers, if Mm -hmm. I remember that right. So some of of that would go to Spectrum for the Lakers or go to like NBC Sports Boston for the Celtics or MSG Network for the Knicks. That's where where it would go to, and that would be how they would do it. But it would allow you to then get that without. I get to sign up for a cable package that has Spectrum on it. I don't care about Spectrum Sports covering high school football on Friday sure. nights. Like I only wanted to watch the Lakers. That's all I care about. Well, that way you can get that experience without having to pay fifteen extra dollars a month for all the other stuff you don't care about. So that's one of the things that was talked about. And then the NBA is also tying the WNBA into um in, into these things as well, where it is going to be. Hey, this is important for us. They're they're riding the Caitlin Clark wave right now, where they know, mm-hmm. hey, you're going to want to watch WNBA games, and the league is promoting. I want to say with something like 235 days of basketball a year, and part of how they get to that number is they include the WNBA through the summertime. So that's how they're they're trying to package. Hey, if you want full year round basketball, like this is how we're going to do it, and WNBA is going to be part of it. The last piece is. They talked about a way to, if you, which I think could be kind of neat, is let's say you're not watching a game, but you click on a highlight and it's uh, Victor Wembanyama has, you know, he's going for a quintuple double. He's, yeah. you know, you know this this many stats. You can click a link and watch the rest of the game, like from right from your device, whatever you're watching on. So you watch the highlight that came across your phone let's That's be cool. realistic or your tablet or your computer then you click on it you can watch the rest of your game probably i'm assuming you pay maybe. for the rest yeah of the game I, I would assume yeah card. it's like yeah yeah and it might be like hey there's a i'm sure they'd have the and all this stuff can build in all these variable pricing models now where it's all right there's only oh. a quarter left we're going to charge you two bucks right or whatever to jump in and, and right. maybe that's how you do it and that's the other thing there so they're going to be like, like disney we're going to talk like surge pricing here it's going to be like, be. like like Disneyland or something. Yeah. I mean, um, it's funny. Like I said, for like me and you, we'll have league pass. And it doesn't yeah. matter anyway. It's not going to so change anything for us. We're going to be there. But yeah, if this is how you can get casual fans to consume games versus just highlights, then pull them in however you can. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's the new, new frontier that the NBA is after. So, I think that's particularly important when you talk about this highlights piece because you look at TV ratings and the NFL dominates, right? There's no, there's no question. You can take any random NFL game and it's probably going to outdraw just about any game that's on the NBA slate and and any sport, right? Baseball, but it doesn't matter. The NFL crushes everybody. And to be clear, we're talking United States television ratings. Yes. we get it. it the nfl is not going to dominate a major soccer game in europe like we get that guys we're yeah. talking about here um, right that's what we're saying um that all that that being said the nba destroys everybody on social media and so uh, the nba nobody everybody. is close yeah. nobody is close to the nba when it comes to social media and so when you look at that strength what you're talking about, if you can jump into a game and have to pay something to do it, when you're seeing a highlight that is going viral and everybody is is reacting to it, that I, I could see where that's I mean that's that's brilliant, honestly. That could be yeah. very, very lucrative for the NBA because of the incredible strength that they have across social media, whether it's whether on a platform like we're on right now on, on YouTube, whether it's on uh, X on, on Twitter, whether it's on uh, Facebook, Instagram, whatever whatever it is, the NBA, is a game that just translates very well across social. And if you can leverage that, good Lord, who knows what kind of salaries yeah. we're going to be talking about like three, four years from I now think if about, that starts bringing in big revenue. I think about last year, LeBron closing in on the record. Yeah. How you could have said, hey, LeBron's 
two baskets away or four points or whatever it was. If you want to be part of the moment live, click this link, pop in your card or pay with Apple Pay or whatever. And now you're there. You're live with it too. You're not. You're not responding to the highlight. You saw it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that that that's a way they can you know do this stuff where it's gonna it's it's gonna look different. I I have things I don't like. I don't. I operate now, especially where I'm no longer covering the Celtics moment to moment, where I have to watch every single play of every game. I spend a lot of time flipping around league pass. I've put the pictures out on social media multiple times of, I like the, the multi box yeah. of you that direct TV offers. And I, you know, will watch a bunch of different games on there and I don't want to, it's already annoying when it is six of the eight games or, or six of the seven games are on, on league pass. I can watch them all on the, on the, the multi box, except the one is on ESPN. So I got to flip over to ESPN. Yeah. And, and I'm, that's like the, the 1% of first world problems that I'm complaining about. I fully understand and get it. But I also don't love when it is, I am, um, I don't love the idea of, well, let me sign into Peacock, load the Peacock app, go to yes. the, go, like, I don't want to have to do all that. So if they give a night, I hope it is. That's it. You're just going here. That's part of why it was ultimately, I think, fine for most of football fans because it was tonight. I watch on Amazon. Like that's yeah. it. I'm not but trying football's to. Football's a bit but, different. Exactly. And part of the reason football remains so popular one, it, people people like violence. We know this, right? That's part of it. But the other thing, it is it is by far and away the easiest sport to follow. My dad loves football. I, and he's not a great example because he's retired. He doesn't have anything else to do. So I don't know why he couldn't follow other sports. But he says, I can wait. I can wake up Sunday morning, look at the injury report to see who's playing and not playing, watch the game. And three hours later, I can turn the game off and go do whatever else I want to do. It's not the commitment of being a basketball or baseball fan where it is oh, every other day, um, you know, tying in to watch, you know, every, every, you know, game and pitch and inning and all that Baseball's stuff. Tough. Like it's, yeah, baseball is really tough. Like, Every that, day. like, yeah, it is. I mean, that is, yeah. Boy, I think I just read the other day. They have 18 days off is like what the collectively bargained agreement is throughout the course of their season from like the end of March through the beginning part of October. Yeah. Like it's, it's crazy, but yeah. So that's why football, that's a big part of why football has become so popular. It's a very easy sport to do fantasy for too. Right. Yes, Cause it's, it, Worst comes to worst, that you line up each Sunday morning and off you go. You know, you, you don't have to, you know, well, I got to, who's pitching? Oh, I got to make sure he's starting the night. I got to do this and daily updates like you have to with the other sports. So, and then there's a big gambling component as well. And it's set up nicely where it is while watching the, I still, I always, even though I live on the East Coast, I always call them the morning games, but it's, I watch the early afternoon game. Uh-huh. Then I watch the late the afternoon game. Then I grab some dinner and then I watch the night game and there's my Sunday. Like it's just, they've done everything so well to keep it, you know, locked in on that. But yeah, to your point, the NBA dominates social, like, like, like all the other sports combined are trying to get to where the NBA alone is, is for social media reach. But watching a highlight that comes across your phone on Twitter only does so much. That's why they're trying to reach out to a way to let's, let's make this better. Well, let's let's turn this into something more. Yeah, that, and that's that's just it, right? They're trying to to squeeze more out of um, their social reach and the the platforms that they've got, which is again absolutely what they should be doing. Um, I I hope it doesn't result in something that is is bad for the consumer in any way. Like trying to flip around, like you mentioned football. Like football has red zone, which is great because yeah. football is the ball's in play and now it's dead for a minute. And then, yeah. and so it's easy to jump around across multiple games. Um, much more difficult. We to used do that to laugh basketball. and say, me, me and my old roommate, we we're like, we, we had red zone before there was red zone. Cause we had Sunday ticket and we would watch the game. Then, all right, plays over, go to the next game. All right, let's go to the next, like, like, and we yeah. would set up a channel list that was just football games. Every Sunday morning, we would build that channel list and just keep scrolling through until like we caught a play that was live 
and just went. And then like, yeah. And we're, we're like, man, like we, like, like how many people were doing that? And I remember asking one of the people who was involved in like creating red zone because they were doing some stuff at summer league one year. Uh-huh. And they were like, that was kind of where it came from was we would sit around in the studio and we're like, this is how we watch. There yeah, should this be a is really channel possible. that does this. That yeah. guy, what, is his name Scott Hansen? I think. Yeah, I think so. I, I tried watching Red Zone this year a handful of times, and it just gave me a headache. Like I, like I can't. I don't even know how that guy survives each weekend because there's it's just nonstop. It so, is like, like it's just crazy. But it's you know it, it really it, it's become an incredible thing that I know a ton of people love. Oh, I do. I, I, that's what I watch. I, I put on, like, I bought the NFL package. Don't tell my wife, but I bought the NFL package this year. Um, and so I could watch every game if I wanted to. And, um, uh, I wound up just watching red zone anyway. I like, <laughs> I thought I was going to use it a bunch. And then I'm like, well, but I don't want to just watch this game. I want to be able to watch all the games. So I wound up just watching red zone anyway, but, um, yeah, it's, you, it's way more difficult to do that with something like the NBA because there's so much action. It's it's hard. You would just, you'd miss so much, but with the NFL, it's certainly something that you can do and they've done a, a great job with it. Uh, when you look at how they're jumping around game to game and everything like that, it's, it's almost like you just become at, at first it was hard to watch, but then you become accustomed to it. It's like, I don't, I don't listen to like, I listen to podcasts at normal speed. There's a lot of people who listen to pod, pod, podcasts at 1.5x, at 2x, or, or whatever. It bothered me too much. I'm like, you know what? I really want to be in, into it and just listen to it. I just listen it at normal speed. And there's people that, that you know, they say, oh, no, 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 you get used to it. I did it for a little bit. I just didn't enjoy it as much. But that's kind of how Red Zone is for me, where at first it was like, okay, this is too much. But then once I got used to it, I flip on a regular game and I'm like, oh my God, this is so slow. So you know, slow. <laughs> like you probably are with podcasts. You listen at, you know, whatever you listen at, 3X or something, I'm assuming. I listen at two. Like I okay. there's a couple I do at 1.5, but for the most part, I do two. Like, and it's funny because I have a bunch of people like, dude, you're screwing me up. You talk too fast anyway. So when I put you on two times, it sounds like the chipmunks are on are on you know yeah. cocaine high like this is you know crazy like you, you please slow down because i have to change it every time i listen to your show like i i know i get the feedback all the time i'm sorry i can't it's just how we get excited I, about this stuff. yeah I, yeah the more passionate i get the faster i talk the more the boston accent slips out <laughs> like all those things start start <laughs> coming out so yeah and then off camera the language gets far more colorful and those kind of things. So I didn't really try to tone it down here for, for the show. But we try. Yeah. Yeah. We try. try. Um, <laughs> all right. We need to finish this out. Cause we're almost yeah, an we're, hour we're into our show here. Uh, yeah. The the wolves, uh, their sale is now going to go to mediation as uh, Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez still feel like they should be able to, to finish to complete their purchase of the team. Glenn Taylor has said, Nope, not selling you the team. Both sides have kind of, you know, battled a little bit through through the through the public, uh, yep. through what's been released about you know the, how everything went down and why things went down, and now we'll see what happens here in, in mediation, and ultimately what happens with this with this wolf side. Like they're, it, it looked like it was all done, and suddenly it's not, and now that's you know we'll we'll have to see what the what decision is ultimately reached here. I, I was thinking about this though from Glenn Taylor's perspective, like. Are the wolves worth more now than what he sold them for? Probably, you know. And is there reason now where maybe he wants to just hang on to them? Yes. But what's the worst case? Someone's going to give you billions of dollars. That's the that's the worst case outcome here. Is you're going to get billions of dollars? Um, is it not not a bad spot to be in? I think big picture. Yeah, check in crypto, bro. That's why I don't have the billion dollar mindset, bro. You're not grinding hard enough. Like, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I don't know. At some point, and I don't know. There's a point where enough money is enough money, and I, I, like, I don't. Yeah, Real ones who stayed with this show through an hour <laughs> to listen to our referee rants and our replays and everything. You just, you just heard us make history. The yep. debut of a new character on the show, Crypto Bro. Crypto Welcome Bro, in, Crypto baby. Bro. You gotta have a grind mindset, baby. That's how you get there. And disrespect women too. Oh God. <laughs> um. I my only real thought of the wolves, uh, sale, non sale, 
See, I turned you around. I'm turning your day around, man. I'm going to get you there. We're going to get you back. Oh, to my gosh. Um, My only real thought is this sucks for a franchise that should be in like full on celebration mode of a great season it's set up for success for years like they have not been uh, in their past. Like that, that part of it sucks like that. That part stinks that we're having to go through this. But kudos to the team and the fans because I think they've kind of collectively said, "Let them fight it out in court." Where here we go. This this yeah. is this is about us now. We're we're going. It's yeah. You know, we're we're gonna do our thing. It's it's like uh, um, major league. Like if they maybe uh, Chris Finch has a uh, thing of uh, uh, the owners all in bikinis and he just rips off a piece every time they get oh, a <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna win it to to spite them. I'm trying to remember what her name was in Major League, but uh, yeah, yeah I, I just watched it recently too. Yeah, but, we're an hour in. I'm not looking. At we're all. an hour in. We're not. <laughs> yeah, we won't deal with that. Uh, <laughs> give me Vaughn. You mean Rick Vaughn? <laughs> Got a hunch he's due. Oh, uh, that's a good. That's one. a great movie. That is it a is. really great movie. Yeah, uh, hats for bats. Keep bats warm. <laughs> It's just a just one of those all time great uh, sports movies. That's for sure. Um, all right, I think we'll say we need to talk good. about the the draft pick tiebreakers. Yeah, we'll we get to that, that tomorrow. tomorrow. Yep. We appreciate everybody who joined us. If you made it all the way to the end, congratulations! You're a real one, and uh, you got rewarded with uh, with the debut of Crypto Bro. Uh, but thank you again, everybody, for coming in. We'll be back at it tomorrow. Who knows? Oh, we didn't talk about Wolverine and Deadpool. Uh, we'll do that tomorrow. We'll too. do that tomorrow too. Yeah, that'll yeah. be our, now that, that's our tease for, for tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Gives everybody there something to look forward to. That will be our scheduled nonsense tomorrow. We'll talk about Wolverine and Deadpool. All right, everybody. Thank you. Till next time. We'll see you and stay safe.